Hello, and welcome to Space Engine Exploration. Okay. Do I have to start every episode with okay? I do. I must. That is something I always have to do. Anyways, I got a new computer. I don't know if I mentioned that in one of my previous episodes. I don't know if I've recorded anything on this new computer yet. I must not have, because I did not have, like, you know, like, image editing software like Photoshop installed. Um, so yeah, this is my uh, new computer, and it runs absolutely wonderful. In fact, this video should be rendered in a very nice quality. And yeah, it's got a Ryzen 1700, 16 gigs of RAM, and uh, what else? Um, that's not the cluster I'm looking for. Gotta go to a black hole one, obviously. Um, yeah, 16 gigs of RAM. It's lacking in storage space right now, so I'm actually recording this with my external um, hard drive. Uh, so hopefully that does not cause any stuttering. It is a USB 3 drive, so it should not stutter. I'm really hoping it doesn't. Hmm. Anyways, um, I don't know if I've configured the video settings, but for people who want to replicate these video settings, uh, here you go. And let me turn the bloom up a little more than that. Uh, a little more. Anyways, continuing on. Um, that menu won't close. Yes, it's been a while. Um, in fact, my last video was an April Fool's video where uh, I just sounded like I want to kill myself. Which, I mean, is pretty normal, but I, like, yeah, genuinely, like, made it a joke where I was just completely done with, like, everything involving the series and space and whatever. And I wanted to make it as bland as possible and, like, as lazy as possible, so I rendered it in, like, 240p and stuff. And yeah, April Fools. A lot of people were fooled by it, and I, I, I can't believe that people were actually fooled by that, but they were. So, mission accomplished, I guess. So it might sound a little bit different. That's because I'm using a new microphone. And get ready. Get ready for me to present to you guys a new microphone. It is a Blue Yeti. So I got like the world's most generic microphone, but uh, the Samsung Q2U, I don't know what happened to it, but it started sounding like complete crap had some weird noise artifacting and I needed a quick microphone. I bought a microphone arm and it did not end up like fitting on it. Like I could have got the adapter fitting but the, the, the microphone arm itself would not clamp onto my desk very well no matter how hard I like clamp that down. Even though it had like a good depth on the trim of the desk so I, I just don't even know why. I don't know if it's desk material and like the uh, foam or clamp or whatever and just not gripping but yeah that was kind of the situation with that. So I decided screw it and bought a Yeti. I'm not a fan of the Yeti, um, it sounds okay, like that's fine, it's plug and play, it's great. I prefer XLR microphones like the AT2020 and stuff, but that would involve buying another mic arm that possibly does get compatible, like that is compatible with my desk, or buying like a floor stand boom thing or whatever, but yeah. Uh, I couldn't be bothered, and I just wanted a quick microphone that would get the job done. The new Rode mic is out, and I do want that. I might actually get that within like the next coming month or two, but in the meantime, I'm just sticking, sticking to true with the Yeti. I mean, there's nothing really wrong with the Yeti. It's a great microphone for uh, people who want something that's just plug and play. But I do have an XLR interface, and I pref prefer something a little bit better quality. Not that like the Q2U was any better. Like this thing is magnitudes better than the Q2U. That thing was a piece of crap. The ATR2100 that I used to record my videos but with back in like 2017 and like early 2018, before like June 2018, was way nicer than the Q2U and I highly recommend the ATR2100 for anyone who's like beginning YouTube and wants a good dynamic mic that's good at like cancelling out outside noise. This Yeti is not. Uh, this Yeti is what they call an omnidirectional mic, not really unidirectional, even in the cardiac polar pattern it's still very omnidirectional. So it picks up a lot of the echo in the room, so if I back up like this, it echoes a lot. That's just gonna happen. My room's not that well sound treated, I do got a little bit of foam, and blah blah blah, mic talk. It's gonna be like another video that I label like microphone crap, but that's just how I do, I guess. Anyways, continuing on. Uh, Yeti. Yeah. Um, blue microphones, not, not, not a big fan. I definitely want like something from Audio-Technica, or a Rode, or something. But, this is, uh, should be a reasonable upgrade over, like, 
what I was previously using, so I hope you guys enjoy the extra boost in video quality and the extra boost in audio quality. Anyways, continuing on, let's find some suggestions. Um, I'm not going to be visiting the suggestions on the April Fool's video, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to be visiting the ones on the 3 million video views episode. Um, yes, I forgot what most of these were, and these are actually uh, suggestions I visited in the April Fool's video. So, um, they might hit me from memory, but it's been a little while. It's been like a month now. Like, it's the end of April now, and yeah, that was like the last legit space engine exploration I recorded. I've just been busy with work and like adult stuff. It sucks. Anyways, um, what do I have car copied here? What did I just copy? Uh, A4, 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 which one? Okay, so this one's from It's Johnny Gat. It's a planet tempered terra with rings and life. Okay. I like the colors, I like the uh, galaxy that's just staring us in the face over there. Hmm. Let's go ahead and... I guess fly into the planet and see what we got. Okay, snow-covered mountains. Imagine we'd probably pull off some pretty cool desktop wallpaper style views. Let's go ahead, since I'm doing this in a nice quality, I'm going to try to get this off the screen. Uh, let's read some of the details first. 7 major axis, 0.67 astronomical units, which tells me that's probably an orange dwarf sized star or a small yellow dwarf. If this is a survivable temperature of 12 degrees Celsius, so yeah, that kind of confirms the point, but I can go ahead and click on it. It is a yellow dwarf. Um, Globular cluster selected. Okay, let's select the little planet again. Oh, just smacked right into it. Okay, continuing on. CO2, oxygen, nitrogen, CO2 is primary uh, compound here, so strong greenhouse effect. Oxygen being the following up, and then nitrogen, which nitrogen is the most abundant on Earth, so... Yeah, in terms of, like, in the atmosphere. Atmospheric pressure of 1.22 atmospheres of pressure, not too bad. Um, I don't think, I don't know. That is, like, the average, if I'm correct. I don't know if it's a max or the average, but as you can tell, um, by the atmospheric pressure in the parentheses I'm at a pretty high altitude I guess no I'm really not so that must be at like sea level hmm well it's 7-2 atmospheres of pressure where I'm at so that might be the maximum atmospheric pressure I really don't know to be honest like that's not something I've ever messed with oh and since I'm no longer on a laptop which the reason why I ended up having to get rid of my laptop is the keyboard broke on it unfortunately um I think it was like a firmware update but it like brick the keyboard uh like how do you brick a keyboard i don't know the stupid gaming software made me really want to just get like a basic laptop with a good gpu but that just doesn't exist unless you buy like a workstation laptop and those are incredibly expensive so back to a desktop it was which is cool because this is like my previous desktop before i got that laptop and this thing's pretty exceptional. I mean, I'm getting a little bit of like stutter here as I'm generating the terrain, but this is totally okay. Oh, there we go. Uh, display. No, graphics. Um, yeah, I'm not running anything too crazy on these settings here. In fact, this is um. Oh, I have FXAA on. We don't really need that. That's just kind of a blur filter doesn't make the game really look much better. It gets rid of jagged edges, like these jagged edges in the background, but it does it by blurring them, and that's not really cool. So, yeah. Enough talking about the new system, let's talk about the planet here. Let's go ahead and just click off this planet. And we're getting a little bit polygonal. Polygonal? I don't know. Jagged on these mountains in the far distance. Like, even if I render a mountain and back up again, it's probably, yeah, it's just gonna drop in level of detail unless I increase that setting, but that makes the game more prone to crashing. But even then, I might be able to still pull off some, like, good scenery. Like, these clouds are kind of jank, though. Yeah. The cloud layer, the lowest cloud layer there, is, like, making all these views hard to get. Got the rings up there in the sky. Well, this is kind of a cool view by itself right here. Like, I kind of like this. Just a nice Earth-like sky, atmosphere, stars in the sky. If I lower it to the ground altitude, some, most of the stars disappear. 
But, uh, yeah, very just Earth looking, to be honest. It's going to kick those clouds back on, or else I'll forget to re enable them. Let's see if we can get a nice sunset view with, like, the rings glowing in the background. Um, okay. This is kind of cool, actually, right here, this view. Wow, that is really stuttering. I wonder why that is. I'm actually going to bring up Task Manager on the side here. You guys aren't going to see it, I don't think. Uh, performance. Okay, my memory usage is at like 9 gigs. GPU is not really at super high load. I mean, it's at some load. And the CPU is totally fine. Hmm. I'm encoding on NVE and C, NVIDIA's encoder, so... I don't know why this is stuttering so much. Oh yeah, I also got a quieter keyboard. I'm sure it's clicking in the background, but it should not be as like loud as the one that had blue switches. This is a much quieter keyboard. I'm a big fan of it. Okay, this is a pretty cool view right here. Let me go ahead and just even it out. There we go. Eh, a little bit more. There we go. Now we're mostly level with the train. So this is a pretty cool view with a nice shadow of the rings being casted down. Oh, is time moving? Oh, that could be why it's stuttering so much. Yeah, if you don't pause time and you're like generating terrain, it's like much worse. It's just a lot more to process. Oh, we got some shine of like these snowy mountains here too. Check that out. That is a cool view. Let's put that right there. There we go. Shadow of like the rings. You can kind of see the rings being, yeah, yeah you see the star behind the rings. You got these shadows being casted, the, sh the shine off the snow of these mountains. This is a cool view. Let's see if we can increase the uh, level of detail too. This is a very beautiful planet. There we go. Increase the level of detail. Okay, back. There we go. Now it's rendering a nice high quality. That is a cool view. Let's get this off the screen. There we go. So, hopefully I rendered this in high enough quality to where like this would make like a good wallpaper. Let's turn off the clouds too. Like clouds on, clouds off. Clouds off looks a little bit better because they're not like cutting through the mountains. But yeah, that's neat. Uh, there's the galaxy again. Anyways, very cool planet. Um, is there anything else noteworthy here? That's really the only thing in the description. We do got a moon here. Just like smack right into this real quick. Oop. Um, as you guys saw in my moon video where I actually um zoomed into the moon with my camera, the uh, I got it right here. What 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 is the exact model of this? It's from Canon. It is a Canon PowerShot SX 530HS, and it's got like a really strong optical zoom of like 60x. I did make a mistake in the video and said it had like 200x optical zoom. No, it's 50. And then it digital zooms up to 200x, which is very like shaky, noisy, and it basically just blows up the image and whatever, but... I'm a big fan of this camera. It's not that great in low light. It's not like a huge sensor, a big lens DSLR. It's called a bridge camera. Well, I mean, the term is bridge camera. It's a fixed lens. I cannot replace a lens on it, unfortunately, but it does come with a very good lens, which I'm thankful for. And I actually got it for 120 bucks second hand. Like, it was super affordable. And to get that level of quality out of a camera that's only $120 is like, wow. So I'm super happy with this thing, and I'm hoping to produce more, like, content with it. I don't really know exactly what I want to make yet. But it's probably not going to be space-related. It's probably going to be more, like, technology-related. And, yeah. I'm, like, not sure on the ideas yet. It's going to take me a while to, I don't know, process something like this. I need to get, like, a good tripod, possibly a slider, and stuff for the camera. Like, I could do it offhand, but that's just not as desirable, I guess you could say. It does have like image stabilization, but it's not as great as like modern stabilization. This is like a camera from 2015. But yeah, I do hope to make some very cool content. Something hopefully like slightly educational slash just very enjoyable to watch. And now that I got this Yeti, I got like a nice condenser style microphone that picks up like all those frequencies and all that. So. I think this would be better for like commentating over a video than for example the QTV was, but I could be wrong. Hopefully I can get some good voiceover out of this. I know it's very mid-heavy and it's not like the best microphone ever, but a lot of people use it and it's widely considered acceptable quality, so 
I'm not really rushing to replace it. So we're sitting in a galaxy above the Milky Way. In fact, it's one of the uh, globular clusters around the Milky Way, so it's a sub-galaxy, I think. Kind of like the large and small Magellanic clouds over there. Oh, and what's this? Is that a brown dwarf? That is a brown dwarf. Okay. Let me read the description and get you the name of who posted this one. This one is from Corsair Plays. The beauty here is not within the planet, but instead above... Let's go ahead and land... right here. I don't know, this is kind of beautiful. I do like the way these uh, Selenas generate when you turn up the quality. You get like a really nice bumpy effect. And if I turn on FXA, which I'm not a big fan of, it will like remove some of this jaggedness and make it look a little smoother. The problem with FXA is when you move ever so slightly, like look at this jagged terribleness. It does not make motion look good. In fact, it's kind of distracting how much that jitters. Like FXA is just not fun. Like, neither is aliasing, but I don't think FXA really improves the quality of the image. So that's pretty cool. Got a lot of nicely detailed craters, and then we got a view of the Milky Way galaxy. And a beautiful brown dwarf, which we're going to go visit. Look at that. You can see the heated bands on the inside from the incredible mass of this thing. So this one is relatively warm, I do believe. What is the temperature of it? 770 degrees Celsius, so this is a pretty warm, I guess you could say, star. We got these beautiful pink auroras, and let's go ahead and just fly into its atmosphere. It'd be cool if you like zoomed into these if it was just glowing on the inside. That is an interesting color for the um, atmosphere of this thing. There's the other star, yes. So it's just green, and it's got like a blue tint to it. Interesting. Assuming this is like mostly hydrogen. It doesn't really mention the uh, materials that are in this brown dwarf, but I assume it's a big ball of hydrogen. Yeah, there's no atmospheric composition of it. Interesting. I never really bothered to check that in the game. Okay, let's see. So is there really much more to visit in this system? Uh, let's go ahead and... I guess this would be the main star, technically, of that planet. It's, oh, whoops. That's the wrong menu. That's the wrong menu. Oh god, I'm pressing all the wrong things. Okay, so it's just a bunch of, like, ice worlds and selenas and stuff, so nothing really, like, too interesting here. Okay, what's this? Or Oceania. Okay. Ball of water with uh, some clouds. <laughs> not uh, not uh, anything really too interesting here. It's pretty warm. Got that going for it, I guess. And a super dense atmosphere because, well, water. Anyways, we'll go ahead and move on to the next suggestion, which is also from Corsair Plays. Go ahead and click read more on this comment. I thought this terror looked pretty cool. Plus, the galaxy that is above it has a weird texture. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, paste this in, no question mark, fantastic, and let's go. Okay. Ooh, a tidally locked planet that has like an entire hemisphere of ice. Whoa, that is weird. Okay, so I've seen this galaxy texture many times, but I wasn't expecting that to be there like exactly when I turned the camera. Uh, it's kind of low res, you can see like the individual pixels of the galaxy, like, yeah. That could be like a slightly higher resolution. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom in here. Okay, I'm seeing green water already. And we'll touch down right here. Since we're next to the icy hemisphere wall of this planet, uh, it's basically sunset because the sunlight from this star here never really reaches this side of the planet because it's, well, tidally locked. It's rotating as it uh, orbits around the star at like the same frequency, I guess you could say. Is frequency the right term for that? I would think so. You see exactly where the, the bump map of this planet is like cut off by shading. We got these glowing volcanoes, and I would say this is a really cool view. But the galaxy doesn't look that good, I guess you could say. 
So, I don't know. Kinda hurts the view. Let's just... Let's enjoy this view with, without the, the funky looking galaxy. Like, there you go. That's, that's a really cool view. I like this view. Don't you guys like this view? This view is much nicer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're not wrong. The galaxy does have a weird texture, but if it was like a higher resolution, I think it would look a lot better. But you can only hope that it's going to be better in like newer versions of the game. Cool planet nonetheless. Let's go ahead and uh, zoom out here and see if we can get another nice view of the giant cyclone that is this hemisphere of the planet. And let's go ahead and hit play and speed up time just a little bit. And now you can see the cyclone spinning. You can see there's multiple layers of the cyclone too as these um, clouds parallax across the other layers of the, of the uh, clouds. So, very neat. And if we rotate with the object, we can zoom into the star and, that we, and we can definitely see that um, it's doing the thing. It's rotating as it orbits around the star. So. Only this side of the planet is ever seeing that star, hence why one side is very, very hot, and one side is very, very frozen. So there you go. Anyways, while this uh, rotates around, I'm going to go ahead and grab the other suggestion, or the next suggestion, rather. Um, this one is from the Gamma file. Ice Giant with Aerial Life. Sadly, the Aerial Life's not visible in this game. Let's go ahead and go there. Hopefully I'm not still locked with this planet. Okay. Rotating very rapidly. Oh, I saw an eclipse. Okay. Oh, there's a small eclipse right there. From this uh, tiny asteroid moon, I think. Hello, little, little asteroid moon. You were causing that tiny shadow over there. Beautiful. Oh, hey, hey, game's lagging. Uh oh. Don't crash. I believe in you. Okay, we're good. We are good. Okay. Edge of a galaxy. Done what galaxy? I don't think that's the Milky Way galaxy. Reminds me of, like, shadows on Saturn. Oh, and here's, like, the uh, kind of pinkish reflection on this rock here. There's our parenting star. So we can't view the aerial life, but it is a beautiful gas giant. I do like this uh, kind of view we got going on, knowing that we're like casting this shadow right here on uh, this planet. Like it definitely reminds me of like Saturn photos. Oh, and this moon's probably the one that caused that bigger eclipse. Yeah, I only saw it for like a frame or two, though. I'm sure if we uh, set the time, we could probably get a good eclipse from this moon right here. Let's just uh, hit play and slow down time. I think I saw a glimpse of it just now. And we'll just rotate around this planet and get an idea of what its day-night cycle is kind of like. There's the eclipse. And pretty soon we are going to be under the shadow of this planet. I think that's the reflection these moons are causing on the planet right there, the illuminated side at the bottom. Very neat. What would be causing that? Is there a bigger moon or is that just us or is there another star that I'm not seeing? I don't think that's us. Oh no, there's a second star out in the distance and that is what's causing that light on the bottom. Very cool. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and fly off of this moon here. Oh, hey, we just like disconnected from its rotation and that was a little bit jank, but there we go. And yeah, I don't know if there's really much more to visit in this uh, system here. We'll smack into this planet though and get an idea of what it's like under the atmosphere. Let's go ahead and slow down time considerably. 
Okay, so we can see the star through the atmosphere. This is just a dark void. We can't actually go into the planet, and we cannot see the area of life, but supposedly, if I click on this planet, it should say there is life. And yes, organic multicellular area of life. Very neat. Okay, so this next one is also from the Gamma file. It says, visit Antka? I, I don't know how to pronounce this. A-N-K, two A's after that. Nine. Is it in the game? Well, I see this one. That's correct, but it doesn't have a nine. Okay, it's an orange giant with a burning planet next to it. And there's the Andromeda Galaxy, I do believe. Followed by, is that Triangulum? Yes. And here is a Molten Planet. Oh, and there is a Bernard's Loop. And Pleiades over there. So we're not too far off from the sun. Wow, that is one very scorched moon. 925, no, 26 degrees Celsius. And the planet itself that is hosting this moon is 4,479 degrees Celsius. That is a very hot planet. And this is the material being burned away from the planet and injected out into the system. And there's another one with a giant comet tail as well. Scorched Desert. We can go ahead and land on this one. It's just going to be blinding white, but since we're here, why not land on it? Nice bumpy cloud layer here. I imagine just extreme turbulence as you fly into this scorching hot 1017 degree Celsius average temperature planet. And you can see it's increasing in temperature as we get lower and lower to the surface. And all of this would just be molten and glowing and terrible, like it is on this side, more than likely. Actually, it's not glowing as much as I thought it would. The clouds kind of are. I mean, I could force it to glow via the video settings. How? Why does it keep doing that? It does that. It, it's done that on like my previous computers too. That's not something that's like unique to this computer at all. And if I turn that setting up, we should be getting like a little bit more molten surface look. You can kind of see it like right here around this volcano. You see like that glowing red. I don't know if that's very visible still bring up the settings and uh, turn the setting up a little bit more and there you go a very hot planet a very hellish looking once you turn on that setting oh and look at this moon insanity that's like a little molten rock very cool very uh actually a nice screenshot moment right here like this is Cool looking. I like the glowing clouds very much. I wonder what happens if I turn up the bloom on top of this. Oh wow. Now that is a cool screenshot. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and default these two settings. Well, at least reduce them, rather. Bloom, around 50%. This, back to zero. Okay, now let's go ahead and move on to the next suggestion. Uh, Soldies asks what settings will I use. I just displayed them. I change them periodically, but for the most part, this is like what I run with as like kind of a standard. Sometimes I'll kick up like the overbright to make more like stars visible in the sky. You can desaturate the ones in the background, but I don't like to. I like to have all the colors there, so I like to turn that down. And then if you want like extra performance, you could turn up the scale and like reduce the overbright to reduce the amount of stars in the sky. And that's a good method to like increase your performance a little bit. And another thing you could do to increase your performance is just turn down the magnitude limit a little bit, reduces the amount of stars, and you'll get a much nicer frame rate. So if you're on a slow PC, just change those settings when you start the game, and you will have a much more playable experience. There will be less stars in the sky, but that is fine. That is what gives you better performance. So. There you go, there's um, a tip for all you guys if you need a little bit of extra performance. Okay, so this next one is from Luca Adrian. 
could be Lusa Adrian. Sorry if I mispronounce your name. I'm not very good at that. And here we go. The very center of a galaxy. Oh, very center of a uh, system. Uh, oh, hey. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, where are we? Very center of a binary planet system. It's not very often that people give me, like, the ID to a berry center. Uh, let's default our magnitude and reduce these stuffs. There we go. A lot of stars in the sky, because we're on a good PC. It's a new PC that I built by hand. Fantastic. Okay, so, very hot. Um, sitting at 500 degrees Celsius. This one's sitting at 224 degrees. I don't know if that's the distance of the star. What's the semi-major axis here? 0 0.25. So it could just be the distance from the star. It is an orange dwarf. So it could be the cause of what's making this so incredibly warm. Or it could be the very strong tidal friction of these two planets. Causing a lot of tectonic activity. And tidal effects on each other. That could be um, basically just making it incredibly hot i mean more tectonic activity means more volcanoes plates being shifted if these have like large cores like earth and yeah they could basically be damn near ripping each other apart if not like kind of an oblong shape because these are so close proximity but two very large masses and more volcanoes and stuff, more volcanic activity means more pollution, CO2, bad stuff in the air. That will uh, increase the temperature of these planets, and that could be why the primary composition of the atmosphere of this planet is carbon dioxide. With a pressure of 443 atmospheres. And this one is also CO2 as well, but it's not as uh, dense with CO2. Um, the mass is 1.05 times the mass of Earth, and this one is 2 times the mass of Earth, even though the sizes are mostly, like, nearly the same. This does have, like, a bigger circumference, so that means there's, like, significantly more mass in the diameter there. But, um, I think that's actually a more dense planet. It, I think there's a density... I mean, you can calculate it based off the diameter to mass, but I don't think it's showing density at all, unfortunately. And I am not going to sit here and try to process that math. Anyways, let's go ahead and zoom in right here. Get a nice view of our system planet. Let's try to get the star in the sky here. So we are totally locked with it, so we should get a really cool rotational view here. Get the cloud running away. Oh, I disabled the water. Ah, here we go. Yeah, that's cool. Very nice eclipse. I can increase the field of view a little bit more. And there we go. That's nice view. Not really any cool mountains or scenery on the surface here, but. For all intents and purposes, you're kind of seeing the effects we have on this planet. Like, that was a very large eclipse. And if it's anything like the lunar or solar eclipse, rather, than we get on Earth from the moon, that um, eclipse would cause like a lot of turbulent winds and stuff. Not like very powerful winds, but very subtle winds would be chilling, the sharpness of shadows would increase because as the uh, sun gets further and further behind the planet, it's uh, basically it's got like we're kind of seeing right now, but we're not doing that uh, at the moment. So we're eclipsing that one, but as we rotate around, we're gonna eclipse the other one. Or we're gonna eclipse one this planet. So let's give it just a moment here. There we go. And yeah, we're basically seeing space. Like that might be another planet on the other side of the star there. I don't know what this is. Yeah, that's another planet on the other side of the star. Kind of like how we'd see, like, Mars next to the moon. Um, we also have this here, and that's the edge of the shadow, which looks like a sunrise, but it's not quite that. 
It's like, oh, yeah, the sun's rising. No, we're just getting to the edge of the eclipse, and that is happening. And if we zoom in, <laughs> we can see the atmosphere of this planet, and that is super cool. Okay. Well, very neat suggestion. I do always love um, dual planetary systems where they're just orbiting each other, sister planets, binaries. Um, let's see. Got this one from Diamond Creeper123 says, Hey, Retro. You should go look at a planet I found in the core of the Milky Way. The coordinates are, and then the ID. Uh, I'll read the rest of the comment in a moment. Let's just hit OK and start heading there. Okay, why the planet is the most Earth-like I have found? Um, what is the ESI value of this? 89. That's not the highest I've seen, but that is pretty high on the ESI value. However, the rotational period is much like Mercury, 2 to, two to 3. Um... Let's see. If anyone says that I stole this from the subreddit and I didn't find it, look at the OP's name in the post. Oh. I don't think people really accuse people of like stealing suggestions, even though it's definitely like happened in the past. Like people will just repost other people's suggestions and stuff. And usually, I, I mean, I've visited so many planets so where I just kind of oversee that and not even notice sometimes, but that happens. And I just don't really understand why people do that, but I guess it's because they want to see their name in a video and they just can't run the game or something. I don't really know. It's not that big of a deal, though, honestly. But, yeah. I wouldn't worry too much about that. Uh, okay, so we got some snowy mountains, nice and eroded. We got life textures and kind of a cracked mud texture. Like dried out mud. Looks like a lake bed almost. Okay. Hmm. Let's see, is there anything else in this? Uh, okay, no. So this is in the core of the Milky Way. So we should have an even distribution of this like galaxy band next to us. So in the core of the Milky Way is this like, it's not in the globular cluster that's in the center of the Milky Way. It's just kind of in the center area of the Milky Way, isn't it? Just zoom out here and get a nice um, angle. Okay, so is that Sagittarius? Okay, yeah, that is the central cluster. Oh, oh no, I'm visiting the black hole. That's not what I wanted to do. Let's see if I can negate this. Here we go. Let's fly back to that planet. And let's see if we can see Sagittarius A of this planet using our virtual telescope. And I'll turn on the clouds. Uh, is this totally locked? No. There it is. The central globular cluster. Let's go ahead and zoom way in. I think that is our target. That blue star right in the center there. And I think... Ah, yes. I'm seeing a little bit of lens bending and stuff. Okay, and there is the uh, small star that orbits the black hole. So we're not getting the best view, but that is Sagittarius A, and this is that small star that orbits around Sagittarius A, S102. So that's cool. This is the refracting band that is glitching out. It doesn't like when you zoom in like this. But that would be the light bending around the black hole, usually. But when you do this kind of zoom in from this far away, it just doesn't really work all that well. But there you go, you can see the black hole from right here. So if you ever wonder how to do that, you just hold shift, left click, and drag your mouse up that, or you can hit page up and page down. And that'll slowly zoom in and out, but that works too. You click your middle mouse button to reset your zoom. So, yeah. Uh, that does increase the chance of the game crashing significantly, though, when you do that, just for the record. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. Well, is there anything, anything else really to visit here? Um, why is the ESI value so high? Uh, let's see. Diameter is very close to Earth. The mass is not very close to Earth. So major axis is 0 0.16, so that's not really relevant. Surface temperature, however, is 2 degrees, and the atmospheric composition is actually very close to the Earth in ratio. Uh, 
oxygen would be in the CO2. So beyond that, I believe it's just based off of the uh, mass, pretty much, and size. Or something. Hmm. Both marine and terrestrial life. Let's go and see if we can find a nice, uh, like, sunset view on here. Like, right here. Because I always try to get a nice view of, like, all the suggestion planets. Make that, like, kind of the dedicated nice view slash screenshot slash wallpaper. Let's turn off the clouds. There we go. Oh, that's a nice view. Right there. Kind of a nice golden sky. Very orange. Oh, there's a globular cluster over there. That's not the one that... Okay, that is the uh, center of the galaxy. It would be cool if I could get the black hole to render from here, but unfortunately I cannot. See if I can get that behind, like, the star or something. I'm gonna have to cycle through, like, a year or so. Uh-oh, I think I might have crashed the game. Ah, uh, we crashed the game. Hmm. Okay, well, let's try to move on to the uh, next suggestion here once I get the game loaded back up, which, um... Here it is. Not used to where all my icons are placed on my new computer yet. Okay, moving in, and here we are, back where we started. Oh, hey, took me right back to this planet. Neat. Anyways, I assume my video settings are reset, unfortunately, but oh well. Okay, so this next one is from Galen, or Galen, or however that's pronounced. Um, scorched desert with super close desert moon. So is this going to be like a binary system? Oh no, question mark, get out of here. Okay, cancel that. Hang on, say cancel. Here we go. In a globular cluster outside the Milky Way galaxy. Ooh, that is weird looking. Look at that. Blood red shadow there. Because it's just so incredibly hot, I guess. There's the parenting star. There is the Milky Way galaxy. Here is whatever globular cluster we're in. I don't, I'm not really too familiar with these. M5, apparently. And yeah, the parenting stars. Uh, with an S. Was there a second star? Nope, that must be the main star there. White main sequence star. Sitting at a similar major axis of. Oh, that's the planet selection there. 4.8 astronomical units. 817 degrees on this uh, blood red planet here, and. 1,284 degrees on this one here, so, yeah. Has water in the atmosphere, that's a very, very strong greenhouse effect. Or greenhouse uh, gas, H2O. And look at these pools of lava in the shadow here, but we have the illumination of this planet to kind of make it, like, not so dark. Look at that. That is cool. Not used to seeing this with, like, that illumination. If I disable the clouds, we get rid of that weird... No, we really don't. Oh, this is interesting. So, I'm seeing this line here. Uh, is the texture of the planet transparent? Is that what I'm seeing, or is this just some fog effect? Like, if I turn off the fog... Okay, that's the, uh... Where the fog starts drawing, I guess. Interesting. Wow, this is a very cool planet. And if we look at the sky there, there is the uh, shadow that we are casting on that planet there. And let's just watch the day-night cycle of these two very hot scorched deserts. Oh, clouds are crossing over. We lost our view. Whoosh. Just glowing red lava everywhere, and then it's daytime again. It looks nice and comfortable, but it's most certainly not. Very cool. You can see the very bright reflection on this planet here. Here's the uh, inverted view, the view from the other planet, and this is just going to turn glowing red as soon as that star crosses that horizon line. Look at that. That is a cool view. That is definitely, like, a unique view that I've not really, like, perceived in this game yet. So this is very cool. 
It's like I've visited a lot of planets, but I've never actually visit like been on a scorched planet while it's like this. You can see the night type side of that planet, and it's all lava there. Like zoomed out, it's like ah, yeah, it's like it's kind of okay. No, that that is literally hell. Very cool. You guys want to visit this? The ID, as always, is in the top left corner. Anyways, let's see. Um. Um. I think that's it. Now wait, we got one more from Sebi Trains. Let's uh grab this ID here. Oh, hey, that worked with the question mark. Galaxy with the lowest amount of stars you can find. <laughs> that is a very low amount of stars. The fact that I can see the stars from here says that is a very low amount of stars, but look at that, they are all blue stars. These are all very young stars. This is like I mean, it's a regular type galaxy, but this is cool. This is like a galaxy. Like, how how old is this galaxy? Age. Where is the age? Uh, doesn't it usually show the age of the galaxy? Hmm. Okay. I'm not seeing it unless I'm blind. Uh, let's go ahead and... This might be the central cluster. Let's go to the uh, central black hole, which is right here. Probably not a very big black hole considering the size of the galaxy, but look at this. <laughs> that is cool. Um, will it show the age of the black hole itself? Right, let's see if I can get the black hole selected here. Oh, there it goes. Age. 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 Damn, it's not showing the age. Okay. Well, let's just check the age of the stars around the black hole, like this uh, blue main sequence star. Age. I could have sworn it's showing ages in this game. I don't know if I'm looking at the wrong things. Planets around this star? Those could have formed way after the star. Oh, okay. We got an orange luminous supergiant in this blue star here. Was it because I had the system selected? Hmm. Well, that's unfortunate, but this is a very cool galaxy. And yeah, it's indeed very small. In fact, yeah, this is definitely in, like the smallest galaxy I've personally have seen in the game as well. Like, you usually tell the size, because you would not normally be able to see the stars from, like, way out here. They would start popping in as, like, you start flying through the galaxy. You start seeing, like, the major stars. This is tiny. And it's really cool. I think that's the only globular cluster in the galaxy, isn't it, that hosts the black hole, too. Interesting. So when this, like, unifies into a disk, is it going to be, like, really small, or is this going to, like, turn into a very small elliptical-type slash... Yeah, just a elliptical galaxy, just a ball of whatever, and as it ages, it slowly turns into like a pale brown color because all these blue stars will be, well, turning old, turning into supergiants and exploding, and then turning into smaller stars that age off into much dimmer stars, and the planet or the galaxy itself will just start turning more pale brown slash red. As everything kind of progresses. What I'm not seeing is because these are like a lot of blue stars. Like this one has a lot of gas giants around it, but the past few stars I've clicked on here. Okay, so a lot of them do have planetary systems. But like a lot of the uh, larger stars will not. So these are all very young systems. This is very cool. That is an awesome suggestion to end the video off, because that is the last suggestion for this video. So, if you guys enjoyed the video, please leave it a like, click subscribe, um, click that bell icon, because YouTube notifications suck. And I will see you guys in the next video.